Hi there everybody, it's Helen from Slim and Stylish and I'm a UK Stamping Up independent demonstrator. And I've got a bag project for you today, a 3D project, which is this one. It's quite a long, slim bag. The reason that I put this bag together was we had blog hop yesterday with my team. And that went through and you can only include a picture on there. So I included the picture of the bag and then I thought I better... You can't get an idea from a picture like you can a card of how to make it in the measurement so I thought I would do a video to show you. So the reasoning for this bag in January was because, I don't know about you, January is a really long month, really long and because of Christmas and celebration and occasions and everything you always find yourself short of money or I do. So me and my friends we don't go out in January, we go around to each other's house and we have um, a DVD night or a girls night in that sort of thing and I thought this bag was quite nice this one has got in it some microwavable popcorn but you could also fit in um, any of the stuff going around to your girly night and you can hold your DVDs I, I show you there it's that's about the size of it on a on a stamp thing so it won't fit in a DVD but it fits in all the treats for your DVD night and it looks quite nice. If you do want to know how to package your DVDs or your stamps, that's great. There's a video um, that I did during Christmas with a DVD pouch that was made using the envelope punch board. So today I'm using the Cake Soiree stamp set, which I love, and I am using the gorgeous Sweet Soiree paper stock. It is lovely. You've got this one that I've already used and the inside of it or the outer side the bit in the middle is this confetti gorgeous you also get these ones in the set there's six different patterns on that side and six different patterns on this side and you get two of each so there's 12 sheets in the pack so this is the one I'm going to use today to show you. If you are interested in the papers and celebration, I am running a paper share. I'm going to be sorting that out Monday. So um, this video is going out Sunday, so I'll be sorting it out tomorrow. If you're in the UK or Europe and you want to join in the paper share, it is six by six cut of every piece of paper that is in the occasions catalogue. And not only that, it includes the celebration paper, the um, the bubbles and fizz paper. That's really nice. So you can join that. All of the details will be on my blog and are on my Facebook. So let's get started. You need a sheet of paper that's 12 by 12. When you're looking at it, I obviously want my, this to be facing that way. Okay, so if you do that and turn it over, I will give you the measurements for it going that way. So you want to score it at four and five eighths, so just there. Now you do need to push down with this because the paper's got foil in it, it can be a bit tricky to, uh, to score, so you don't want to do it lightly. Five and seven eighths, so that's there. Then you want to score it at ten and a half. And then you want to score it at eleven and six eighths, which is just there on the edge. Okay. Then you want to turn it so that the top, so this is the that's how I want it up. So you want to turn it that way now so that it's facing downwards, if you see what I mean. And you want to score it at one and a quarter inches, am I right? Yeah, one and a quarter inches, so just down there. Okay, and then you want to turn the whole page over and you want to score it at 10 inches because this folds back on itself, okay? So it's one and a quarter on the one side and ten and a half on another. So when you bend it, that will bend that way and that will bend that way, like a Z. Okay. That's all you need your scoreboard for. So just take your snips now and your bone folder and you want to fold this bit in. Because it has got the foil running through it, it is a slightly tougher DSP so you 
do want to use your bone folder your fingers won't won't cut it if you know what I mean and then this one is that way so that's where your Z shape comes in like that it is such a big box I'm not sure you can see I'll move it along and hopefully that was clear okay then you just want to come so where you folded that back over there there is this small rectangle in this corner from where you scored you just want to chop that bit off so I'm not even folding it, I'm just going straight up and just chopping that off because it makes it easier then when you want to fold the, the thin bit here. And you want to do exactly the same. So on the other side of the T, this bit, you've got the same rectangle. You just want to cut that bit off as well. Okay. Now you've done that, it's easier just to fold this strip in. It's just a, such a small strip. There you go. And burnish it. I love working with big pieces of DSP because it is just so pretty. But I never have enough room for it, especially when I'm on when I'm filming. This my desk that I film on is right by the window, so um Hopefully it allows natural light onto the project rather than, you know, overhead light. But there's not that much room, so I'm a bit squished in. There we go. Fold all of these and burnish them. There we go, yep, yeah, that's all of them. So now what you want to do is you want to fold this one over and just come back over and make sure it's going the right way okay once you've done that you want to go across the top here where it folds with your fast fuse and also I do one just here you don't need to because it's going to stick well but I just like to have two and just fold that down like that. Okay. So that then meets up for the box. This old olive goes really well because it's got the old olive in the in the stack, and I prefer it running that way than if it had been running down. So it's quite. It's as if stamping up new exactly what I wanted to make with this piece of paper. Actually, this DSP stack is quite good. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to fold these. No, I'm not. <laughs> Joe, I made this mistake with the last one. I'm just going to cut these flaps up here. So I'm just going to just do that. A slight tab. I did that with the last box. I sealed it and then realised I hadn't cut the bottom and I had to try and cut into the bag. So clearly that's a, that's a me mistake. I obviously like doing that. I can't remember what I was saying before it went horribly wrong. Um, that was it. Stamping up with this pack of paper, particularly, has done really well with the front and the backs. Everything that's on the back is colour coordinated and matches the front, so I could have used any section for this. With some of their Christmas papers when I was making bags and boxes, I know that I was a bit annoyed because the other side of the, the paper didn't match what was going to be on outside so I couldn't fold anything back or use the inside at all but with this one I could so that should just marry up quite nicely with the other side of the box just stick that down on the fast fuse there there we go and that will be the back of your box there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pinch both of those in. It goes in quite naturally, it quite likes it. If you've got any of those little magnet fastenings, which I haven't, you could always put those on the inside of your box. Um, like I said, I haven't got any of those. 
just going to have a look and see if I've got any of my library clips I have. So if you chose to do it that way instead of having a handle on it, you could. That would work. For the bottom, you want to go in there. Which side is my back? That side's my back. So I'm just going to put some fast fuse across the bottom there. And shut that up. Okay, the best thing to do once you've done that is to grab your bone folder, go down the middle and just put some weight on the inside so that all of the bits stick at the bottom there. Okay, once I've done that, I'm going to use the ribbon like I had on this one, I think. Or am I? I did quite like the library clip. I think it's because the library clip is gold and the, these are silver, so I am going to use the ribbon it doesn't really go right so all I did is I went to the full length of my my hole punch because you do want to do each piece separately because it's quite thick having two sheets of DSP there and I've just guesstimated I find on a big bag you don't have to be as precise with your guesses as you do with the smaller bags you can just eye it up come out you come there we go like that oh, that's my back there's my front so for the handles I'm just gonna grab a piece of organizer ribbon I love this ribbon from the DSP from the new catalogue it's with the petal palette suite which believe it or not is my favorite suite in there I love that little bird that's on it. I mean, this suite is gorgeous and pretty. And I tell you what, if you had a wedding, this suite, or lots of birthdays, this suite is beautiful. I mean, I'm doing it for prettiness, but can you imagine that as a wedding invitation or on any wedding stationery? That would just look beautiful. And there's dies in the catalogue as well, not just the stamps. So it could really be used for that. It would look lovely. Lead that through, which I'm going to do it the other way. I find it much easier to push from inside the box than I do from the outside. So let's put a knot in there. If you've got your, where's my scoring tool? That's always quite handy because you can just push it straight through the hole then, providing you can see where the hole is. There we go. round push it through again there we go and the other one that I cut to match it so I knew it was the same size is there One of my um, my YouTube friends who watches she watches all my videos, which is really nice, and um, she's she's ever so lovely, um, Lucy. She commented on one of my Christmas ones to say that I was doing a pool party project and I had painted my nails in pool party. And she was like, I can't believe you've got your nails to match. Well, if you're watching this one, Lucy, look what I did last night, not knowing. <laughs> Rich Razzleberry nails. <laughs> So I'm using Calypso Coral today, but when I picked this bag up, I thought, oh, how amusing. Right, so for my tag, you're going to be the, I think you're going to be too narrow, so I'm going to use, use that piece. I keep all my scraps of card in one of these little envelopes and just put them in my paper thing, so I know I've got some scraps. So what I did is I needed some Whisper White. Can you believe it? I've left the scrap envelope for that over there. There we go. So with the Whisper White, let's just grab a little piece. I stamped on my cake using Memento ink. So do you fit the... Just 
in there. I'm not sure if that piece of paper fits. Do you fit? Yes, you do. Nice and tight. And then I fussy cut it out. I haven't bought the dies for this one. I had a choice of the dies for this suite or the dies for the petal palette suite. And like I said, I like this one, but I love the petal palette. So that one won. So I got those dies. So instead I'm fussy cutting. And actually, this one's a little bit easier to fussy cut than the um, bird. So it's... Because I can't think of anyone who's getting married this year, actually. Last year, I must have gone to about ten weddings and we didn't have this, this suite. This year, I can't, I can't think of anyone. I don't think Prince Harry and Meghan would like my my card turning up at the palace for them, so <laughs> they're the only people I can think of off the top of my head. Right, I'm going to be putting this one onto Calypso Coral. So we do have Calypso Coral stamping blends. So I'm just going to come through now and colour these in quickly. Um, or the light one. I don't know why I'm doing that. I want the dark one first, don't I? some colour in the other day with my um, stamp and write markers and I always used to colour with my stamp and write markers I quite like my stamp and write markers for that um, especially as it's got the the tip and the felt end again but the whole way through it I kept thinking it's not the blends I think stamping up have got me hooked on these else can I think to talk of? I'm very aware it's you just sitting there quietly while I'm, I'm colouring. Normally when I use these it's on a card so I do them in my time lapse and speed them up a bit. I don't know how to do just individually speeded sections. I'm not that techno technological savvy. I can uh, speed it all up or none of it up unfortunately so I have to work it out because some parts when you're especially when you're colouring in it can be quite you're sitting there watching someone colour, aren't you? And then you're probably spotting that I've gone over the liners about 60 times, but I'm so wary about the fact you're just sitting there watching. <laughs> Perhaps I should have just coloured this first, but then I wouldn't have been able to tell you what I was, I don't know. I'll shut up and go back to being quiet. It's probably a bit more preferable. whether you followed along the blog hop yesterday there was some gorgeous things I've gone through the catalogue and one set stamp set did not shout out to me and that was the um, perfectly tailored one with the gentleman's suite I really I don't I didn't that didn't appeal to me and then I went through the blog hop yesterday lots of people had used it 
they'd done some absolutely lovely stuff with it and I found it being added to a basket in my in my Stampin' Up items and I think sometimes you just need someone else to to use it and the magic just to jump off and then it inspires you I because I really wasn't taken with that at all and now I quite like it and I hadn't even bought the punch but I've put the punch in now too there we go I think the term is easily sold to me <laughs> see something pretty decide to want it right so I just stuck that on there so where's me So it's about two and three quarter inches that you want and it'll just give you a nice measurement around it. I'm just going to cut that down to about five as well. So it's a bit more of a manageable size. Yep, like that. Just going to stick that on. I broke my um, trimmer actually, I'll, I'll tell you that because that's a nifty little trick. I dropped my trimmer and it broke and the um, the edge come off this bit here and I was ever so uh, annoyed with myself and I mentioned it on a group and it snaps straight back into place. So I was really happy. So it wasn't actually broken, it was fixed. But just in case you ever have one and you're looking at it thinking, oh, I've broken it. It's quite hardy. You can fix it again. <laughs> so what I did here was I just cut this into a tab. So I'm pretty sure you might have seen me do this a hundred times now because I think it's a nifty trick. It's using the lemon from the fruit basket set. Really handy. And you can make a tag just like that. And then all I'm going to do is come in with my Versamark, my silver embossing powder, and my embossing buddy. I wonder where my heat tool is. I'm just going to grab that. You've just heard everything fall as I try to get my plug sockets. My paper pack was balancing on them, so that's what that was. So there we go. I'm just going to come in with the embossing buddy first. use the for you it's on this one but on this one I'm going to use celebrate because I've already got a for you bag I made a wedding card before Christmas I didn't have anyone to give it to so I stuck over the top of it um, a happy birthday for a birthday and it fell off in the envelope <laughs> I wanted to make a birthday, a wedding card for a blog. Uh, so I haven't got any weddings coming up now. So I thought, well, if I just stick a, a happy birthday sentiment over the top, they won't know. <laughs> and of course, by the time they opened the envelope, it, it was there saying, you know, wedding wishes or whatever it was that the, the set said. Felt a bit of a wally. Uh, hold a piece of paper. Knock that in, so that's off there. There we go, I've got a few loose bits on there. There we go. I'm just going to put my heat tool on, so do turn your sound down. Have you got it up? go I learned this trick of putting your embossing powder on a post-it note not long ago from someone in one of my classes and she doesn't demonstrate she's just a, a lady who does it at home and she said if you put the embossing powder onto a post-it note you can stick the note down so it doesn't fly away. So when you move your arms or anything, you're not knocking it accidentally and not getting your powder everywhere. It was a great tip. Great tip. I love tips like that. So I'm just gonna put this through, 
tie a small bow on the front. Pull that all the way through. I have, I'm going to have to go again. I did a video the other day and Honestly, if, if there was ever a way to do a blooper roll for a, a craft video, it would be on it. I must have tried to tie this ribbon that I had cut too short about 50 times. And by the time the video was finished, it was about 30 minutes long. And about 15 minutes of it was me trying to tie a ribbon. So I, I had to refilm it. And I refilmed it and I took ages tying the ribbon on that too. So I must have just had a very special moment. Not as long as I did the first time, but still. So with this I'm just going to poke that back through the middle there if I can. Fingers and thumbs and I'm just going to stick that to the top up there with a glue dot. That's about midway in the middle and stick that down. And that's my bag. I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry it was a bit longer, but it did have the tag as well as the bag. And if you missed the blog hop yesterday, do go and have a look at www.slimandstylish.com and everybody's blog's on there. And if you like this paper, but you don't want to buy all of them, I think they come to something like 108, I think. Or was it 138? I don't know. I added it all up and put it on my YouTube, put it on my Facebook and put it over on my blog. Um, if you wanted to and you're in the UK or Europe, join in any paper shares and have a 6 by 6 of every paper in the catalogues. It costs you £22 including postage. So just drop me an email or drop me a message and I will get you added up on that. I'm sorting it out tomorrow. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you do it and if it all works. And thanks. See you soon.